Yeah, I don't want to go to jail for anything. I'm much too, like, weak. And you're pretty. You are listening to the Stand Up Dads Podcast. This is heck of boring. Yeah, it is. Let's try again. Who's got the yelling kid, Mike? Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, shut up! Shut, shut up. your door. I'm <laughs> recording a very important recording. Let's not go too far. <laughs> oh, uh, she's like, yeah, we are the loudest. We are really the loudest. It's I sad. Would hate to be your neighbor. <laughs> and other friends and stuff. They're like, like even right now, like her door is shut. Oli, shut your door. <laughs> shut it. <laughs> Her friends will go like, I know, I know when Olivia's talking with, you know, our our kid, because <laughs> yes. all of a sudden it's like, rah, 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 like <laughs> on that note, you're listening to Stand Up Dads. This is Rob <laughs> and the Portuguese Big Mouth Mike. And <laughs> this week we have a very special guest. She's a single mom. She's a small business owner. She's a teacher. She's an author, and she recently became a master. Alicia yes. Bates. <laughs> Yay. So you just love that with my last name. <laughs> master yeah. Bates. Oh, God. I mean, <laughs> Technically, Tell us I'm more female, about so the doesn't apply, but <laughs> <laughs> my last name is a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, wow. So uh, this week, we're going to be talking about uh, single parenting. So Mike's a single dad. We haven't had the point of view from a single mom, and... I'm too yes. stupid to figure it out on my own. So we brought her on. So thank you for coming. Yay. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. And uh, we'll go into, now I hear your goddamn cat. Uh, <laughs> it is my cat. Oh my God. They don't want to stop. <laughs> I have to, I may have to feed her. She may not shut up. Can you hear it really? Uh huh. I can hear it. All right, I better feed her. Hold on. Uh, she won't stop. She will not stop. Okay, Hold I'll on. pause here. I'll All just right. talk to you about you for a while. Uh, <laughs> so while he's gone, so Alicia, you teach high school? Yes, teach high school. And tell us about yourself. So I'm trying to figure out where to start. <laughs> You're good. Well, how many kids for one? Okay, so I have two kids. My son is 21 and just moved out of the house about a month ago, probably, uh, and with his girlfriend about two hours north of where I live. And mm -hmm. then I have a daughter who is 16 years old and plans to join the Air Force in a year. Very so cool. I'm going to be an empty nester here very quickly. So how <laughs> are you excited, freaked out, both? Both. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I know you two have younger kids and yeah. it's exhausting. Having, yep. having the little ones is exhausting. You are probably tired like constantly because yes. it is exhausting. It's exciting. There's you, you have all these different emotions all the time. And as they grow and as they go through things, you're, you're sad for them. You're angry for them. You're happy for them. You know, just constant emotions. Mm -hmm. Nothing prepares you for the day when your child moves out. <laughs> it uh -huh. is. And I raised my kids to be independent. I raised them to do dishes on their own. They, mm -hmm. they started doing their laundry on, I never even had to ask them to do their own laundry. They just started doing it on their own because of how I raised them. Yeah. And so I raised them to be independent. And now, you know, like my son's independent living on his own. And I'm like, where the fuck is my son? I, I, yeah. I'm ready for him to come back home. He's been gone long enough. Can he come back home? <laughs> yeah. I'm just having him here. You know, I don't miss mm -hmm. the messes. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, there's a lot that I'm like, oh my God, it's just so, it's so much nicer. You know, my grocery bill is a lot cheaper. <laughs> 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 so, utilities are cheaper, you know, and, but I'm like, I just want my kid back. You know, but who, who said this is okay? You know, so this is actually, in my opinion, up to this point, the most difficult part of parenting is letting them go. And you no longer have them in your day-to-day -day life. And it's just, it sucks, but it's exciting. It's exciting because you get to see them like make it on their own, you know, like they're doing all, they have new struggles and they're, they're working their way through them. And it's like, I, the best term I can have for it is a tornado of emotions. It's everything. I think the hardest thing I would have with all that is trusting that I did a good enough job preparing him because mm -hmm. up till now, and granted he's seven, but I'd be like, oh, he's going to fuck up. And of yeah. course they are. I mean, but it's just how well they recover from it. 
So, I mean, you feeling pretty good about that with yours? I, I am, but at the same time, I worry. I mean, okay, I love his girlfriend. She's she's a real sweetheart. You know, they get along really well. <laughs> it takes a lot to ha- be able to handle my son because he <laughs> is just, <laughs> he is something else. Anyway, so it takes a strong person to be, you know, my son's other half. But I worry because I'm like, man, I've been, you know, in the dating world, I've been through some complete shitty dudes and Mm -hmm. I don't want my kids going through that. And, you know, so I, I worry about him, but at the same time, you know, I think she's great. It's nothing against her. It's just, Oh my God, he's out in the world now. What's going to happen? You know, and the same thing when my daughter gets there, it's going to be the same thing. You know, it's like, Oh my God, did I mentally prepare them? How to, how do you like, you know, stand up against that kind of shitty person? <laughs> well, you said he's 21. Is he talking about marriage already or? Oh, I, every time <laughs> I see them, I say, don't make babies. <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't make babies. And I, I, um, actually it's something that I've talked to him a long time, like since he was probably 12 or 13 years old. The one thing that I always told him, I was like, do n- I seriously was like, don't make babies. I will buy you condoms. <laughs> I will buy, I do not want you making, you have a life to go start. You, mm-hmm. you need to get into your twenties. Don't make the babies. <laughs> you know? so yeah. I was like, I was off work getting him condoms, you know, like whatever I can do. I'm like, and I would tell him too. Which in its in its own way is its own contraception because it's like at that point it's like no mom i don't want to talk about it anymore <laughs> come on let's go now the ribbed ones are like oh, oh, oh mom. <laughs> so that when it comes to happen you know it's gonna be like she, like the girl back like, i really like the rib ones <laughs> like no what's the matter with you i i just i don't, i can't I can't picture this Man. anymore. <laughs> I wish I would have thought of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm all for it. Let me talk to the girl picking you up. Let's talk about it. Oh, oh I'm just, I'm not in the mood anymore. I can't do this. <laughs> now, son, let's talk about lubes with your mother. Yeah. <laughs> if I would work, we'd just be like, yeah, every time, every time, he'd be like complaining in later years to his therapist. Every time I wanted to have sex, I, I just heard my mom's voice. Her face would appear. Er, ruin everything. Ruin yeah. everything. Now I'm a priest. <laughs> what's my favorite flavor? <laughs> Yo, there's lots of things you can do that won't get you pregnant. Tonight we're going to talk about it. No, oh God, no. God, no, mom. Oh. It's like the best way ever. Yeah. Oh. It's an important talk, but. Uh. <laughs> Going about it that way is so subtle, too. I'm sure he was like, oh, Jesus. No, no. <laughs> no. It's like, I'm not having sex till I get older. Why? Because well, then I'm going to have to talk about it with my mom. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't handle it anymore. <laughs> She's ruined it. <laughs> Well, get away from your son's direct <laughs> sex life. I just, I, rem- <laughs> I met my wife when I was 21, but we went out for like three months and I broke up because I didn't, I was still 21 and I was an idiot. I had a lot of mistakes to make and we didn't see each other for 13 years. And then we got back together. And so I had plenty of time to be an idiot and not make babies. And, oh man, if I, if we stayed together, we definitely wouldn't be together today. And who knows how many fucked up kids we would have had other than just the one. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I, I almost get a good my message. drink out. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I think you're killing it like that just as far as, you know, focus on yourself for a while. It's okay to be selfish. And then the daughter wants to go into the Air Force. Wow. Cool. Yeah. What does I, she want to I do heard, there? Uh, she, well, she wanted to be she wanted to be a detective. And so Hmm. she was kind of seeing it as her route to becoming a detective. Now she wants to go into nursing. So I, I don't know if she'll follow through with that, Mm -hmm. but I asked her, so my daughter has been one of the bravest people I've ever known. So when she was a toddler, she hopped on her tricycle and just went flying down the driveway, of course, scaring me half to death. (laughs) I'm like, Oh my God, as I'm chasing after her. And, but she, that that's, that's what she does. And she, um, she doesn't see this as brave, but last school year. So she's a 
she just finished her junior year. She's about to start her senior. So last year during her sophomore year, in the middle of the school year, she changed schools completely. Oh, not even knowing, I think maybe she knew like one person at the other school. And I told her, I said, that is so great. I mean, that's like, yeah. I mean, for a teenager to completely switch and leave all of her friends that she's known from elementary school to a brand yeah. new school where she doesn't know anybody, maybe the one person I can't even remember. That's a big deal, you know? So she's just always had this bravery aspect to her. So she's like, I want to join the air force. I want to do this. And now she's changing her mind. But what's staying consistent, which has surprised me is she wants to go into the air force. And so that's, I'm curious to see where this goes, but we're supposed to the month after she turns 17. So in October is when we're supposed to go talk to the recruiter. And so I'm like, honey, did you know that there's like bugs when you do stuff for the military? <laughs> you know? did, you, did you know there's this thing called boot camp? <laughs> and like, did you know you're not going to get chicken nuggets every day? <laughs> like, these things. And she's like, I know, mom, I know. <laughs> Did you have your kids all like, did you have hundred percent like custody and stuff? Did you have them all the time or did no, you share? Um, we actually have 50, 50 legal and physical. Um, okay. however, I'm going to try to like watch a little bit of what I say. Here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Try so, carefully. Yeah. So my son, when he was 15 years old, decided he was no longer going to his dad's house. Oh, okay. And, um, I told him, you need to go visit your dad. That's what's supposed to happen, you know, but ultimately it was his decision. My son's a big kid and yeah. there was nobody who was going to pick him up to force him to go see his dad. Yeah. And so I just had to do, you know, my part, which was, you should visit your dad. You need to visit your dad. You know, that's what you need to be doing. Um, but he was like, Nope, I'm done. So, um, I said, okay. So I had, we of course had to go back to court, you know, just Every, every little thing he, my ex would bring us into court and I'm like, Oh my God, can't we just like deal with this between ourselves? My daughter, she was, I want to say 14 when she decided to stop going. Oh, okay. Okay. So they just decided to stop going altogether. That was totally on, on them. Yeah. I don't want to get into the reasons sure. why yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. like a no. whole thing, but yeah, they're my babies. I, you know, yeah. they're. I will say this, their dad lives 20 minutes away, mm -hmm. <laughs> has two children with his current wife, and the first child is five or six years old, and the second child is about two, and my kids have never met the second child. Oh, uh, yeah. So, and that's not on my kids. You know, I'm sorry, they're kids. You're, you're the adult. Yeah, yeah. You, you, need, you need to be the one making it happen. You're the adult. Yeah. But you know, Hey, it's okay. I, you know, my yeah. kids have me. I'm just grateful that I was able to take care of them, but sounds like you've done good up to crazy. now. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I told Robert. I'm like, when we have this, this show, it's going to be basically like a side by side comparison as to why a single mother <laughs> is far superior to the single father. <laughs> She's gonna be like, I've, probably. I've got my house, I've got this, I'm a single business owner, and then I'm like, um, <laughs> I I keep her alive. We <laughs> <laughs> and the fucked up thing is, Mike gets the pat on the back, and everyone looks at Alicia like, well, yeah, you're yeah. the mom. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. dads have it's yeah, true. dads have such a lower like we were saying before, like we for us really it is just like just being out with her is yeah. like, Oh, that's so sweet. Like, like it's the big deal that I just like took her in public, you know, like, Oh, yeah. pat him on the head. He's a good daddy. You know, yeah. like <laughs> and it still pisses me off to no end. You know, I mean, obviously not now with the COVID, you know, social distancing stuff, but I would take him out to, you know, like Thunderland or the zoo or stuff like that. Cause it was fun. Yeah. And you know, you get the, Oh, are you babysitting today? It's like, fuck you. I'm his dad. I'm yeah, that's babysitter. true. Oh, yeah. But mm -hmm. That's insulting. It is. Yeah. But that's then insulting. yeah, the wife went over to go see a friend of hers a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Are you going to babysit me, dad? I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so even my kid looks at it that way. <laughs> it's funny because it's, yeah, they end up looking at it like, because I have run into people before because you end up, you know how you end up with those uncomfortable 
talks with other parents because you took them to like a Funderland or you took them to the, like, what's those ones that like the jumping places or whatnot. So the kids are playing and then you have the other parents talking and I've had parents like other dads talk to like, Oh, so you're, you know, you're stuck with her today or whatever. Like I got stuck today. And it's like, uh, no, although (laughs) this hasn't happened since Owen was little, but I remember like you and I would hang out. And like, sometimes you'd have Oli or sometimes you wouldn't, but we'd be out. Yeah. And yeah. I swear people looked at us and wondering if we were a gay couple. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should just totally play into that. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Especially around here, it would really get people like all upset. That would be nice. <laughs> we live in an area that's totally like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Before we get into the single parenting differences and all that, last week we were talking about what it is to be a good parent. Uh-huh. And Mike sounded disappointed that we didn't have an actual quiz that we could get scored. I want to see how poorly I do. I don't do good on quizzes to begin with. And I want to so, know. I've got one. It's like no risk because I, I'm as far as I know, none of us are planning on having newborns again anytime, <laughs> period. No. Not even soon. <laughs> so I found one. Are you ready for your newborn? You guys want to take a quick uh, quiz? Yes. Okay. Question number, and I'll put a link to this if you guys want to take it. There's a bunch of other quizzes. It's just the other ones were like, we need your email address and your social security number and all yeah. this crap, which I'm not going to do. So <laughs> question number one, if your baby suffers from diaper, diaper rash, you should A, keep his bottom damp at all times, change his diaper less frequently, change him more frequently, or give his bottom some airtime. Or give his bottom some airtime. <laughs> I think it's the right. airtime, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, you got it. Is it? Oh, <laughs> no, thank yeah. God. Because uh, <laughs> that's why I was like, I really was like, oh my God, what? It has not. It's only been eight years since she's been a baby. <laughs> Dude, like, it's sixteen she's nine. for me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But again, moms just know this shit, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's playing into the stereotype. <laughs> It's best not to expose your newborn to large crowds until, and they're all he, I don't know why. He's two weeks old, six weeks old, one month old, or three months old. Three months, right? Because don't you want him to get past like, and then you also want everyone to get that whooping cough shot that's going to be around him and all that. Okay, I don't know. So I say three months. What, do you, what say you? Tell me the first two choices again. Two weeks, six weeks, one month, three months. For big so, crowds, not just like meeting other family yeah, members or large something. Large crowds. Yeah. Uh, probably the right answer is three months, but I would do probably a month. Six weeks. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I know um, we did less yeah. than that. I think Oli was at like the Schultz Museum or something. Like that. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> within you. two weeks or three weeks, and we were like, she'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Your baby's crib should include, and no, superheroes is not the answer, Mike. <laughs> a, a soft mattress a firm mattress feathered pillows their favorite stuffed animals so i got the mattress that was breathable because i was so afraid of the what do they call it the one where they can the, death? yeah so i actually got this special mattress that even if she f- somehow got onto her face you could breathe through it so i cheated on that one so was that soft or firm I would say it was a, I don't know. It wasn't super soft. It was kind of medium. Forget what it was. I'll say firm then. Good. (laughs) Yeah, definitely firm. Definitely firm. Yeah. (laughs) I was really weirded out on it. She was in like those, also the sleepers that kind of zip up Mm -hmm. around them. And I did everything but strap her down so she couldn't turn around. (laughs) Oh, I loved the, the swaddling ones where they're like in a straight jacket. Yeah, that's those. Oh, yeah, that's the best. like sweet pea. Uh, yeah. my, like the pop my, from Popeye. My son worked himself out of those. He did not like it, and he has this weird like body acclimation thing. I I don't get it. Like claustrophobic, he, or I no, his body like. It'll be super. So I used to live in a Victorian that was built in 1910. Mm -hmm. So it was very poorly insulated. Mm -hmm. And his room, like in the middle of summer, of course, would get very, very warm. Now he had a window air conditioner because I bought a window AC unit for all three bedrooms and the living room. And he wouldn't have it on. And I'd walk in and be like, oh my God, it's 
freaking hot in here. What are you doing? He's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and then in the, in the middle of winter, the dude's in shorts and t-shirts. His, just, his body just acclimates so crazily. So he would always work himself out of those swaddlings. But my mm. daughter, complete opposite. She did better at when she was swaddled. So you guys each have just one kid. It's yeah. amazing how two kids from the same exact parents can become so different from one another. It's nuts. <laughs> I have, it seems like I have a different kid every day. So, <laughs> so which one are you today? I okay. remember yeah. there's this story my mom tells that tells about how our personalities are different. My brother, sister, and I. My sister's the oldest, and she said the way we got out of the crib is how we've lived our lives since. And what my sister would do, she'd climb like an acrobat, climb out as a baby and just climb down, run off. My brother would sit there and fiddle with it until it opened, and then he'd climb out. And then I would just launch myself out and crash into whatever. (laughs) Sounds about right. It's like you just drop out on your head and then get up and run. (laughs) You know what? Your mom is absolutely right about that. That makes sense. (laughs) Observation. My son, my son would just stay there until I got him. He never tried to climb out. And he, he's, that's very much how he is. He's like, he pretty much stays like he's, He's kind of a rule follower, but meeting him, you wouldn't think so. Mm-hmm. You would not ah. think he was, but he is actually a rule follower. And then my daughter, she's the one, like I told you, she just hopped on her tricycle, just went flying down the driveway. Yeah. That's, she would climb out of her crib all the time. Wow. And See? I like, <laughs> so your mom is right. You need to tell your mom she's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It shows it because it is true. The, the personality types fit into all three of those, like, mm-hmm. My parents are still making fun of me where they're just like, are we going to see more of the new cautious Mike <laughs> that thinks before he does things? I'm like, nah. so mean. <laughs> I'm almost 50 and you're going to still, t- and you're telling me, ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> My dad loves it. He thinks it's so funny. It's like, is that, is that, are we going to see more of a cautious Mike that thinks before he does something? No. no and i'm like yes you will <laughs> I'm cu- i don't Damn know it. if i could handle that uh, <laughs> we don't have anything to talk about on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> planning our schedule with mike the new segment on Standard oh my Cast. god there's so many of those where where he would show up back when we could do them in person he'd show up i go hey and he'd be like, you forgot we were recording, huh? I'm like, totally. I'm like, oh, Robert's here. Oh, I'm driving up. And he's like at the door. I'm like, oh, That's we're recording. <laughs> okay. So, so Mike, yeah. Mike, yeah. Google Calendar runs our work life. Why are you not <laughs> using it personally? <laughs> you know you can combine your personal and work calendars, right? I have Google Calendar. I have little whiteboard <laughs> calendars. I have a little calendar that I carry around. And the hope is that one of them I remember to look at or, or set the <laughs> alarm right. And generally, I don't know, one out, one out of five times it works. <laughs> the rest of the time I'll look at it later and go, oh, like, oh, no, like, dang it. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah. So... <laughs> How he's often? getting he's getting mad just us joking about it because it's not at all. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a, it's no, like, I've come to expect that with you. Uh, <laughs> Damn it! I'd be worried because it's like, oh shit, Mike's. If Mike's reminding me of stuff, that I'm gonna be like, oh, <laughs> yeah. what's, what's wrong with me? I need to check myself into a memory care unit or something. <laughs> the world has ended. Yeah. <laughs> So, how often should you bathe your newborn? Uh, daily, two to three times a week, once a week, once every other week. I would have thought daily, but I bet it's two to three times a week. Yeah, two to three times a week. You got it. Yeah, you should just answer after because you always have the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sitting Let me get the wrong answer, answer first. <laughs> Let me get the wrong answer first, and then you answer and go, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, Mike. With the hungry cat screaming next to you, how often you can hear you, her? She's so mad. How often should you feed your newborn? Oh, uh, oh the newborns every 
every couple of hours. Yeah. Yeah. Every five hours, every time he cries, every two to three hours, on the hour, every hour. Ugh, every two to three hours. It's every two. Yeah, because it is. It is basically that first, and they had said it was only going to last like a month or two months. It was like her first five months was every two hours. Yeah. I never had to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because he had the feeding tube. Oh. So we would plug him in and just let it run. And so he would sleep all night because he had the thing on and man, that was nice. Yeah. Yeah. I had hallucinations and I wasn't even the one having to feed. I was just getting up with her with her mom every two hours That's until she told me <laughs> i know i was trying to help and stuff and and then basically <laughs> yeah i i had a pile of clothes that i was holding like it was olivia and then i was putting it into the dresser drawer she's like what are you doing i'm like i'm putting olivia to bed she's like just go to bed <laughs> like, just disgusted like and the next morning i'm like oh my god i'm like i was so hallucinating stuff you know i thought, like, I thought like, that was her like a- i was like wasn't it like a dish towel or something like that? It was some sort of little, yeah, little like pile of some clothes or cloth, and I was putting it to bed in a in a dresser drawer. Oh <laughs> I was like, I women have superpowers. Like you guys are able. She was able to be up every two hours. Like whatever. It's yeah, tough nice. though because because once you're when you're feeding it takes you know a good half an hour to an hour depending and and then so then they finish eating and then you're like okay do I sleep or do I eat right now because I need both mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah I mean? you can't, yeah you can't really do both you have to do one or the other it's not like you can eat and sleep at the same time so it's it's tough that part's well, tough and having multiple kids because everyone always tells you sleep when they sleep. Well, you had when you had a baby, you had a five year old, didn't you? So yeah. how does that work? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> and that that's why it is nice to have a two parent household because well, the way that it should have worked <laughs> <laughs> was <laughs> he cook and he handled the housework. <laughs> uh-huh. Because, you know, ha- again every two to three hours of feeding a baby, it, it's not just you feed them and then you have two to three hours, you know, between it's not like that. It's like you feed. And again, it could take up to an hour to do that. And then you've got to change the baby. You've got to do all this stuff. And that's, that, that takes up to two hours. It, it takes so long to do all of that. And then you're like, oh, man, you know, just fucking exhausted. I just want to go to sleep, you know? And you're like, but I'm also freaking starving. So But then you're like, he's not doing laundry. So you've got to run laundry because, you know, babies go through a lot of laundry. And then also women who are nursing go through a lot of laundry. So it's like, you know, you're not staying on top of it. So it's like, that's ideally the other party is handling all of that stuff. (laughs) But when it doesn't work out that way, then it's like, when are you supposed to sleep? You know, and then you've got a whole nother child to take care of and to entertain and so to much make sure harder, that they're yeah. getting their needs met, you know, and it's just, it's exhausting. It is, and I believe honestly that that is why a lot of marriages don't work out is because the, the having the more than one child is exhausting. And when you've got two exhausted people trying to make it through life and work and take care of these little people that they've never, you know, they're learning every single day. Oh my gosh, it's no wonder. It's I hats off to those couples who have made it through. <laughs> Alicia's kid, if you're listening, no babies. <laughs> we had a socially distant birthday party for a friend of mine last weekend, and I met up with some people I've known since high school, and they had two kids, and they both just went off. Uh, I think they're like 19 and 22. And one of the things that stuck with me was the mom saying, you know, after the kids left the house, I realized I liked my husband. <laughs> and it was like, oh shit. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's a job. I mean, it's an unpaid job apparently, but you know, stick it out and you know, hopefully you could see why you guys liked each other in the first place. Cause yeah, there are days where we hate each other. Hate's a strong word, but you know what I mean? And it's because, you know, we're fighting with the kid and mm-hmm. especially now that we're locked in at the house, it's definitely a lot more stressful. I think another mistake that comes in with that is 
couples forget to go on dates together. Mm-hmm. They they forget to they forget to flirt with each other. They forget to do all of the stuff that happens before the kids come along. And if you can manage to pull that back in and it it will disappear. It'll come in waves. It'll disappear and it'll come back. It'll disappear. And, but if you can bring it back and you can start flirting with each other again, then it just you know, it, it, it'll help. It'll help you get through those times because when they're young, it is so hard. It really is. Yeah, flirting has become quick. He's asleep. Let's go. <laughs> okay, okay. You guys need to start texting each other some suggested things <laughs> because that, that'll, that'll go a long way. Yeah, it hasn't. But <laughs> Have you tried it? What? You should test, like text some, like, uh, Text your sexy talk while she's right next to you. So she, we all knock it off. <laughs> no, I probably get smacked in the head. So knock it off. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. So I found this article on parents.com about single moms versus single dads examining the double standards of single parenthood. So based on the last census with uh, parents with sole families, eight and a half million are with the mother. 2.6 million are with the father. So that's like almost a quarter going with the moms. And it's just funny because I mean, I've seen it with Mike and, you know, with other single friends of mine that I have that have kids, there's definitely a different standard that you hold. We talked about it earlier. The dad does the slightest little thing. It's, oh, you're such a great dad. And then the mom does something. And I was like, yeah, um, I'm sure I see it being married. I see it, you know, I do something and I get a big kudo and my wife does stuff. And it's just like, well, yeah, that's your job. And it's just fucked. Yeah. Uh, moms are judged more harshly. When yeah. The, it's it's the expected. Yeah. You guys, it's it's like you're expected to. And then if you don't do something, it's almost like, oh, you don't have but, that motherly gene. But with a dad, it's like there's so many, I guess, unfortunately, so many bad dads that it makes it where anything you do is just like, you bought him an ice cream? Oh, with your yeah. own money? Oh, <laughs> and you don't have to because you're not together? Like, what is, it's like that, you know, like, oh, you didn't just leave? Oh, give him a, give him a medal. Give him a prize. <laughs> Like you actually call, oh, that's not, wow. Give him more than a medal, you know? So it's almost rhetorical <laughs> at this point, but I'm guessing you've seen that, Alicia. <laughs> so yes, of course, of course I've seen that. And then, you know, there's always like when I was still married and a stay at home mom, I was not the, I didn't, I did work from home, but I, but it wasn't something I did daily and I didn't have to be in my kid's classroom and I didn't want to be in my kid's classroom. So I wasn't in my kid's classroom. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, I was like, I got other stuff I want to do. You know, I love my kids like tremendously. I will die for them, but Mm -hmm. I don't need to hover around them all the time. You know, it's like, I'm okay, you know, letting my kids go. And again, that comes back to raising them to be independent, but you know, on the flip side. Okay. So Yes, you know, mothers maybe don't get the same acknowledgement that fathers get, but I know many, many single fathers who do not get child support. They take care of their kids full time. They have custody of their kids and they do not get child support. They don't go after mom to get the child support. The government isn't stepping in to go get the child support. So uh, there's a lot of fathers out there. And, you know, I know fathers who have tried to get some support from the government, you know, uh, food stamps or, you know, medical for their kids. And because they're not mothers, like look at WIC, for instance, Mm -hmm. they're not able to get the aid. And so there is, there, there's this double standard constantly with mothers and fathers and each sex deals with its own difficulties there, you know, one of the things that I admire about dads and I wish I could, I wish I could be more like a dad in this regard. You guys play with the kids. Yeah. Uh, Mike does. I don't. Yeah. You, uh. <laughs> I, I heard about your PVC thing. So I, you get yeah. down and you guys, you guys play with the kids and I'm sitting here and I'm going, okay, I have, you know, I have to work. I have to do the dishes. I have to make dinner. I, you know, I have to do all this stuff. But you guys are able to just kind of like let that kind of go for a minute and you guys just play with the kids. And I don't know if it's just my personality. I don't know if it's a mom thing, but I know most moms, yes, we do play with our kids. Of course, you know, Mm -hmm. like one of our favorite things to do is play a game at, um, at the table while we eat dinner. So Mm -hmm. we, we, one of our favorite games was called liar's dice. I don't know if you've ever played it, but it's a really, 
Yeah, it's a really easy game to play at the dinner mm -hmm. table while you're having dinner. So um, we played that a lot. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, we're done. I got to go do dishes. You know, it's not like I don't stay in that mode, you know, and, it, and I admire fathers to be able to, you know, you guys can take like a whole day and you'll just totally play with your kid like the entire day. And I'm like, that's amazing. But yeah, you're talking to Mike there because I <laughs> despise playing with kids. <laughs> I really am bad at it. <laughs> You are probably going to be with me on this though. Yeah. You know, the game that I have hated ever since I was, even as a little kid, yeah. I hate Candyland. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I, but I mean, it's one of those I things you play game. because it's like one of the first things <laughs> no. they learn. Get no, the, I no, I refuse to play I it. hate Monopoly. Like, that one's I, the see, worst. I love, I do uh, like Monopoly, but... Well, you're but a money I, person. <laughs> I, yeah, as a kid, as a kid, I hated Candyland. I'm like, there is no challenge here. This, uh, where's yeah. my challenge? Okay, the game that as a kid that I loved was Mastermind. I don't know if you've ever played that. One. Never played it. No. Uh -uh. Oh my gosh. How's it's a it? code breaking game. You have to look uh -huh. it up. So you have these little colored pegs mm -hmm. and it's a two player game. So you have the one person is creating this code and then the, the other side has to break the code. It was a uh -huh. game I was really good at and you really have to use your brain. So though I love strategy games that's and cool. I love games that make my brain work. And that's how I've been ever since I was a kid. I'm like, I freaking hate Candyland. I refuse to buy it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm Candyland, like <laughs> my friend who's really into board games, like he's got like 600 board games. He explained to me like even technically why Candyland sucks. He's like, basically whoever plays, whoever starts wins. Mm. Like yeah. the odds of it happening is so high that pretty much whoever starts wins. And it's like, wow. Oh. Like he's like, that's why it's, it's like the worst gameplay ever. Right you know, there, there's, there's just no yeah. strategy or like, no, there's no. nothing to it. And I'm like, God, it's just so, I hate that game. Yeah. <laughs> right now I got the kid playing Sorry. So he's seven. Oh, sorry is fun. I like and, Sorry. I like oh sorry. my <laughs> God, the tears shed. <laughs> because I refuse. One. I mean, I'm not like out to just get them, but if I have a chance to plunk them, I'm going to plunk them. You should. Yeah, yeah I you know. Should. But you, holy because, crap, you'd think I punched them in the head just with a. No, tears. they have to learn how to lose. Exactly. They have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And up I, I remember. Anyway. Yeah. I remember playing a game with a grown man. One this is, I was a teenager and he was a family friend. And so we growing up, we played a ton of board games. I freaking love board games. Yeah. And he would come over and one time we, I don't even remember what game it was. And he lost, he was the source loser I had ever met in my life. <laughs> a and grown I man. Like, I love how you said that. A grown man. I was like, what is the matter? And I'm the type of person where I'll play Yahtzee with you, but I am not keeping score. Like, sure. you know, I'll do all that because I want to do better than what I did in the last game. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I win. I really don't. And I'm in Aries and I should, like, we're supposed to be very competitive. I'm competitive with myself. I have to beat what I did last time. I, you win. Awesome. I'm super excited for you. I'm so happy you won, even if it's against me, but I'm like, wow, dude, don't you know how to just have fun? I'm like, who cares who wins? Well, I learned early on that the best way to when you lose just to take the fun out of winning for the other guys, just act like you don't give a shit. It's like, Oh yeah, whatever. And yeah, it's like when I used to golf, I didn't keep score cause it was more fun that way. Cause it's like, right. why am I gonna, cause I'm not good enough to keep, I'm not like I'm going to have a handicap or anything like that, but I loved it when I would play golf with people that would keep score, but they would still cheat. And it's like, Oh, I got a good power in that one. It's like, what? Well, you know, you took like three shots from the tee box on that. And it's just whatever, man, I don't give a shit. But yeah, I, when you talk about the playing with the kids, I can't do it unless it's something that involves like the PVC thing was fun. Cause it involved mm -hmm. work that I could do and I could yeah. satisfy my OCD thing and make a little legend right. for the sizes and stuff. And like, so yeah. yeah, we'll play together then, but you know, we haven't played with it that much since mainly cause it's been 102 out. Fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. You should use it for what we did, which Inside. I got that stuff for the fort making because yeah. I got tired of to make a fort. I had every lamp in the house, sure. like in the living room, <laughs> everything and then you're space. pulling things that's all <laughs> falling on you and stuff. And it's like, <laughs> now she can make a fort, make all these different size forts. And then you could take it apart, but it didn't need like every, anything of any height. You know, we had like um, a, a mic stand, all sorts of like tables, chairs, mm -hmm. 
one wrong move, everything falls on you. It's an insurance <laughs> claim. <laughs> oh, Don't touch the sides. <laughs> yeah, be very careful back here. Don't, don't stand up too fast. Don't lean against it. Yeah, don't let the cat in. She'll knock it over. Like, yeah. yeah. All right, so back to the thing. So you mentioned earlier about how guys like won't seek out help. I mean, you mentioned WIC. I mean, it stands for Women, Infants, and Children. So mm-hmm. where do we fall into that? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. If you have infants and children to take care of, why shouldn't you be able oh, exactly. to receive those, those services? We also have stupid why, why not? pride. I yeah. Mean, there's a, yeah. Well, there's well, a reason we die too. before you do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Either we're smarter and we figure out how to not die so quickly, or yeah. you guys are the smart ones and you're like, I'm out. <laughs> not, yeah. We don't want the last years. But I don't know. But it's just like people expect women to be perfect no matter what the circumstance, even though it's like, well, you got a few kids, you're on your own, but you got to raise these kids. And if a dad just puts minimal effort, they get a pat on the back. Mm-hmm. But legally, it kind of hurts dads because I'm in a lot of dad groups on Facebook. Sorry, I'm looking at a squirrel outside the window and I'm waiting for him to get his. <laughs> to That's awesome. Squirrel. That's like squirrel. perfect ADD moment right there. Squirrel. I know. Like little squirrel. And I There's, don't think of Robert as very ADD at oh, all. Yeah. I have a bird feeder outside the window and this one, he, he's just found this feeder and I'm convinced he's going to hang himself on it. Cause he's, I don't know. So anyway, but I mean, on the same token though, like since moms are just assumed to be good moms, the dads are soon to not be. And then like, Oh, I was talking about the Facebook groups. There's a lot of single dads that haven't seen their kids because legally they're at the disadvantage where the courts just take the side of the mom, even though she may be, you know, yeah. doing meth, banging strangers, whatever. And granted, yeah. a lot of the dads probably shouldn't be seeing their kids. You know, it's a case by case, but there is definitely a precedent that, you know, the moms get the first crack. I don't know. My experience was the complete opposite. So the courts, I don't know if it's media in an area thing, because I'm up here. Well, at the time I was in Yuba County. Mm-hmm. So Marysville. And now I'm in Sutter County. So I don't, I don't know, because I don't, I haven't experienced the courts here. but. Up here, what is happening is a lot of 50 50 is going on. Okay. And so, what I have found is in talking with a lot of fathers, is a lot of them just don't push it. They sure. don't, um, they don't fight the way that they should be fighting. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of it is self inflicted, you know, that they're not seeing. Um, so recently I have a a friend who's been wanting to see his child and the courts have been closed Mm -hmm. and the mother has been keeping the child from this father. So he was finally able to get in the court, finally able to, you know, get visitation and stuff with his child. But, you know, you have a choice in this life. You can choose to sit on your ass and wait for things to happen for you, or Mm -hmm. you can choose to make things happen for you. And that's, there's, that's the only two ways you can go. You you know, either it's, you're going to wait for it or you're going to make it happen. So I'm, I'm the type I make it happen. I'm not going to sit around, but my, my own personal experience with that was when we would go into mediation, Mm -hmm. despite what I would say, and despite what he would admit to, (laughs) they still went his way with everything. So it was very biased in his favor. Mm -hmm. I don't want things in my favor. Mm -hmm. I want things in my kids favor, but if he's going to admit to stuff, why is that not being taken into consideration? you know, yes. for, for how things, Oh my went. God. Wow. So, you know, that's, there should be no, the only people who should matter are those two kids. And if, sure. if one parent is admitting to stuff in mediation, why is that not being taken into a, into a, you know, account is, you know, and it's harmful to the kids. The stuff that was sure. admitted to was harmful to the kids. And it's like, it was just so like biased in his favor. And I just was like, I'm, I'm going to lose on, you know, I'm like, I'm going to lose my kids if I keep trying to fight. So mm-hmm. I gave in, I gave in to everything because I don't want to lose my babies, you know? So I've had the act. The Why do you think sure. that is like, I have, that's horrible. Like, I wonder, I don't even just, know. Was it well, like always the same judge? Like, was it a judge that turned out to be like, you know, biased yeah. towards men or? Or against I don't women. know because one judge was male and the other judge ended up because he retired. The other judge was female, but I, the only thing I can figure is for a long time there, I did not have an attorney cause I couldn't afford mm-hmm. one. Um, he had an oh. attorney. And so I don't know if that played into it. Um, I, I honestly have no idea. I, I, I don't know. 
So I, what I do know is, and, and I remember hearing the mediator lady <laughs> and like our, you know, cause they take you in and you meet, you're kind of like, it's a public, you know, thing. And then, and then you schedule your appointment for the private mediation later, but they can like tell you how, how it's going to go. And I remember her talking about, you know, giving fathers a chance. So in my opinion, as I'm hearing her talk, I'm like, she's like biased in favor of fathers, which is not fair. Nobody should be biased in favor of mothers and nobody should be biased in favor of fathers. And it's like, we need more fairness and it's just not happening. So regardless if you're male or female. I have a feeling there's probably the lack of lawyer. I mean, cause they know little tricks be. that would just procedurally put him in at the advantage, whether mm -hmm. it was right or not. And that just sucks. Exactly. But the good thing is your kids made the decision when mm -hmm. they were 14 and exactly. 15. So exactly. You know, you ended up, I mean, not that it's a win lose thing, but you won it's that sad. One. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, it's actually really sad. You know, that's the one thing that I'm like, man, you know, and the thinking back, cause he, their dad has another child. So mm -hmm. his, their dad has five kids, three different oh, wow. moms. And so there's an older one and you know, this should have been my red flag when we were dating. But of course I was like, at the time I was like 19, 20, 21 mm -hmm. years old. And I was just like, Oh, poor dad. He's trying to be with this kid. Well, pretty much our entire marriage, our entire relationship, we were together for 14 years, married for 12. The entire time I would have to push him to call her. Wow. You need to call your daughter. You haven't spoken to her in like a week. You need to call your daughter. You need to call like, Hey, when are you going to get your daughter? When are you going to get, you know, it, it's yeah. a constant thing. And I remember like, you know, thinking back, of course, hindsight's twenty twenty. like, oh my God, I should have seen this when we were dating because it was me who was pushing him getting visitation with his daughter. It wasn't coming from him. And, you know, and the same thing has repeated himself with our two kids. Uh, he doesn't reach out. He doesn't take initiative. And it's really sad. And I feel bad for my kids because I grew up without my father being constantly present. Yeah. And that's not what I wanted for my kids, you know, and it's just, it's, it's sad. It's like, the kids saw through it, you know, as kids will do, you don't, you don't, you as a parent don't have to say anything. Your kids, your kids will figure it out. That's what I'm afraid of. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, let's see. Okay. So wrapping this thing up. So, I mean, there's all sorts of fucked up stuff when it comes to being a single parent, um, single moms, you know, they're way, I think, I was in my reading, I saw an article that mentioned something about like mo single moms being like three times more likely to be in poverty with kids uh, than dads. There's higher risk of more mortality, poorer self rated health and mental health, you know, lower socioeconomic status than par partnered mothers. And unfortunately, single fathers are largely under unstudied. Uh, they really haven't mm -hmm. been focusing on that. I don't know if it's because it's a relatively new phenomenon. I mean, it seems like we always had like Kramer versus Kramer. So single dads were a thing since I was around, but. It's funny because people forget to like, I don't know, even at my current job, they'll just forget. I'm like, I talk about my kid all the time. Oh, <laughs> you're a single dad, you know, or, <laughs> or like in the dating stuff, I we were, I'll even put that with no one reads the bios but the bio, I'll put it right in there and it'll be, as you go for a while, then you'll get like, Oh, you got a kid. How old are they? Like, like, it's like after a while I stopped even writing like, like a long thing. Sometimes I'll just put like, you know, dad first artist second or something just because I used to write a long thing. No one reads any of them. So you've had that problem too. <laughs> oh my God. They don't even, yeah. Yeah. It'll be a God. similar thing. Don't you? Yeah. It's oh. crazy. They don't read it. They're just like, that's just like match with you, start talking and then go like, oh, it's like, well, it almost makes you want to go like, wait, do you want to take a moment and go back and look and then write back? Let's then. Talk I've, said that. <laughs> I've said yeah. that. I'm like, go read my profile. Yeah. <laughs> Cause like, yeah. well, I'm not even on online dating right now. Cause I don't want to deal with it, but I would be like, I'd go to look at that. They'd message me. I'd go look at their profile. I'm like, dude doesn't even match me like whatsoever. Like everything is like <laughs> on this profile is the opposite of what I have in my, so I'd be like, go read my profile. Have you read my profile yet? <laughs> I had got one guy. boobs. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Well, I don't even, I'm actually very modest. So I don't even have those kind of shots on my profile. <laughs> yeah. But guys, so, we just assume. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> very true, very true. <laughs> But I have, I, cause I put on there, my, I'll put the age of my kids and I'll be like, 
I'm only, I'm interested in, you know, I, uh, let's see, your kids must be the same age or older or have no kids at all. You know? And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to start over with the little ones. I'm, I'm trying to plan for retirement now. I'm like, you know, that's where my brain is at. And I want to have a decent life where I can travel and do stuff. Yeah, And I don't want to start over with a little one. And so this guy messaged me and he has, he's like, I, I, there's pictures. And sometimes, sometimes they don't indicate if it's a grandchild or a child, you know? So I was like, yeah. so do you have kids? How old are they? So he replied, he had a four year old. And I'm like, I'm sorry, your, your child is too young. And I said, he's all really, I'm all like, yeah, that, that's why I have that on my profile. He's all, you're serious yeah. about that? I'm like, oh <laughs> no, yes, you, yes. you thought through it. It was a joke. <laughs> I was just testing oh you. God, what is you're this? serious. Why would you not be serious about it? Why would you write, take the time to write it? And like, I don't get when people get mad about that type of stuff anyway, because you'll see stuff too, where it'll be like, you know, I only want to date someone that's five foot 10 or taller. And it's like, okay, good. I'd rather not waste time. Like, why don't you just put the things in there that bug you or, you know. I'm sure if the guy was five, eight and a billionaire, he'd look a lot taller. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. He just carries himself so much taller than five, eight. Yeah. (laughs) Unless you're rich. Yeah. Yeah. But I I don't know. That's funny. My requirement, my requirement is just be at least an inch higher than I am, <laughs> an inch taller. And I'm like five five, <laughs> so I think just Sorry, be an Mike. inch taller. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm five seven. <laughs> I'm I'm five nine with my hair. <laughs> Especially this morning, like, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. with my new afro, I'm going up five ten. I'm gonna start getting into. I'm gonna start breaking into different um, weight brackets or whatever. <laughs> I'm going to get you a, a, a stand-up dad's hair pick. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'd leave it in, too. Just stick it in there. That would look so, sweet. What a great way to advertise. Alicia, so for single moms out there, what would you say about dating as a single mom? Oh, God. Just just wait. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a ringing endorsement. <laughs> That's funny. So I've been dating. I've been single for 11 years now. And I've had a couple of relationships that have, one was a little bit over a year. One was almost a year. Um, But that's the max over the last 11 years. And I've had, you know, other relationships that have been, you know, short lived. Wait, don't get over head over heels. You've got to give it that. I think actually Mike and I have talked about this before. Yeah. You have to give it that three to four months because that's when the crazy comes out. That's when you're like, Ooh, I, this is not something I can live with, you know? And so don't get all head over heels in the first three to four months, because you don't even know who that person is. They're putting their best foot forward. Mm -hmm. You know, this, I'm telling you that three, if you stop and you look back through your previous, you know, whether they were full fledged relationships or you were dating, whatever, if you go back, you're going to start noticing that pattern, that three to four month period of time is where things were like, you know, this person isn't really working for me anymore. You, you've just, I don't know, people are very swipe left, swipe right today. And it's, there's no stick to it, stick to it anymore. Mm-hmm. So the best way to get, to get through that is to give it that three to four month period of time where you're, you're, you don't even need to see each other every weekend, you know, get, work slowly into it, you know, and learn who each other are, talk on the phone, you know, don't just be texting all the time. And, you know, you got to go old school with when it comes to dating. You just described my dating life in my twenties. Cause I, three months was like a record for me. I'm telling you the there's, whole, yeah, yeah. It's, if you stop and look, if you think back, that's, that's when things are like, okay, I've got it in this. It's not working. So you just, you have to get yourself to pass that point before you can really start like letting yourself kind of fall, you know, because you need to keep your eyes open there. It, I, one of the things that I have, cause I give dating advice actually all the time privately to, to friends and whatnot. And, uh, one of the things that I have done for myself that has actually helped quite a bit because one of the things, especially women my age who have been married and we've had that solid long-term relationship, that's, that's what we're after again. And a lot of men are in the same position, the ones who've been married and they want that long-term relationship. We're so, we want that so much. We just want that comfort and that, that, you know, recognizability of, mm-hmm. of having that solid relationship that we just kind of rush into things. 
I'm going to be completely honest here. Cut, cut, wave my hand so you can cut this part. I completely forgot where I was going at that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you were just talking about the whole, um, you know, the three to four months because the crazy, you know, you can see the crazy. And then you were talking about the advice you would give to people that were, you know, women your age that have been through the solid relationship and getting started again. I mean, well, it's, we, this actually kind of goes into, you know, your side gig. You know, you are a small business owner and you, you know, do give advice professionally. God, I almost wanted to say life coach, but that sounds so cheesy. But, you know, on your <laughs> website, you have the, which I know it's still a work in progress, but it's the stop half-assing your life thing. <laughs> yeah. And I think Mike and I would both benefit from that. because Yeah. Is that what's written on it? Because that's exactly, yeah. that, that speaks to me. Yeah. Yeah. It, I half, it, half ash and half ass and half do half measures for my whole life. <laughs> what's, the easy, <laughs> what's the easiest, uh, easiest way to get past this? And I find I, it in, in my daughter all the time. It's the worst story. I'm like, dang it. I know who this is. I'm talking to. Yeah, I know who I'm arguing with. <laughs> there's just, I don't know. I just am not one with, I, if I want something, I will make it happen. Like I wanted to be a homeowner again with my ex-husband. I owned three homes mm -hmm. and I was like, I want to be a homeowner again because I want that kind of control over my living space. You know, I want to be able to paint the walls. If I want to, like I painted my countertops a few months ago, you know, I'm just doing all kinds of stuff in my house. And I'm like, I want to be able to do that. I don't want someone telling me you can't do that because you're a renter. That sucks, mm -hmm. you know? So I bought a house and I have now owned it for four years. That's awesome. And it's, yeah. And it's, it works into my ultimate plan for my future because it's going to give me that equity that I need in order to have the future that I want for myself. So ev I, my life, I, every decision I make leads me to what I want for my future. So I don't half-ass my life. Are there things that I half-ass? Of course there are, <laughs> you know, I own uh, I own um, the shark um, robot vacuum. Mm -hmm. I just bought the new one that, that empties itself because I don't want a freaking vacuum <laughs> every day because I have a dog and two cats and two and myself and my daughter with long hair. You know, you guys, you know how girl hair gets everywhere. So mm -hmm. I have that, you know, because otherwise I'm just going to do a quick vacuum job. You know, I don't want I don't want to do it. That's something I will half ass. So why not let the robot do it? Sure. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's good. So you know, there are some things that I do, but like for my life and my goals, mm -mm, that cannot be half-assed. You have to make that happen. You have to full-ass that. <laughs> That's why I like full-ass as opposed to half. <laughs> I mean, what I get out of talking to you is, you know, if you're going to be a single mom, you have to be kind of a badass to make it work. So, you know, yes. I commend you. It sounds like you've done a great job with your kids. So, Thank and you. yourself, <laughs> you know, because a lot Thanks. of people that I know have, that have been divorced after long marriages. I mean, shoot, anything over 10 years is long nowadays. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. them just fall apart or take forever to get started again. Yeah. Well, when I was first divorced or first separated, I'm a smart girl. I can figure, I can do, you know, anything I put my head to, I can, I can do it. And I was looking through the paper and the jobs that were available to me, mind you, I did not have a college degree whatsoever at the time. I was uh, 34 years old no college degree, but lots of work history. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at these jobs and everything that I was eligible for was minimum wage, no benefits, part-time. That, that's what was available to me. Anything that I was like, oh, I could totally do that required at a minimum an AA degree. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of went, you know what? I'm going to go to college. I'm going to go be a teacher. I had from the moment I was from a little girl, I would line up my stuffed animals and I would be their English teacher. And that's what I did. Cause I, my family history is like really mixed up, but there were some times where I was an only child. And so that's what I would do. And so I was like, you know, I'm just going to go realize my dream of being an English teacher and I'm going to go to school for that. Okay. This was in the time when teachers were being pink slipped left and right. Mm -hmm. Like there were all these cuts being made. Teachers were losing jobs. Even those who were tenure were losing jobs. So any time I mentioned that I was doing this, they're like, what do you, why, <laughs> you know, can, sure. what do you do? And I'm like, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Cause I, you know, I'm a headstrong person and I had this image in my head of what I was going to do with my life. And sure enough, by the time I got there, you know, five years later, teachers were being hired. Mm -hmm. Now they're offering, well, maybe not now, but like over the last couple of years, they're even offering, you know, bonuses to teachers, like signing bonuses mm -hmm. because they need teachers so badly so that, that there was this whole flip. But I did college 
in a five year period of time, and it should have taken me seven years. I got two AA degrees within a two year period of time. I got my bachelor's, got my t- teacher teaching credential. And then, you know, just this last summer, I got my master's degree and it's, I'm the first and only person in my family to do that. Nice. And it's, it's the, it's the mindset. I have a growth mindset and there's, there's things I can fix on myself. You know, I definitely am a big growth mindset person, but I just feel like you can make whatever you picture in your life, you can make it happen, but it's not going to be an easy road for some. It's harder for some. It's easier. It's definitely not easy, but I've been on the food stamps. I've been on Medi-Cal. I've been, I've worked three jobs and gone to college full time. I, you know, I've done all of that. It's, it's crazy hard, crazy hard. And you, and you won't take on another kid. Come on. (laughs) (laughs) You're serious about that. Oh yeah. (laughs) I'm just taking it. (laughs) Bring on the kids. No, but you know, Mike, Mike and I, I don't know if the, your listeners realize this or not, but Mike and I actually work for the same online school. Mm -hmm. So as an English teacher, Mike, I don't know if you, I don't know if you get this part of, I don't know if you ever find out this kind of stuff out about some of the kids, but some of the kids write really uh, difficult things to read. And, you know, I just, I just hope that I can inspire them to understand that yes, things are tough right now, but they can move forward. You know, that whatever their life is right now, if it's not a good life for them, they can make their way out. And I'm just a huge believer in that. Yeah, the best I try to do with them is I will talk to them because I'll get a lot of students where they'll be like, well, I have I have ADHD and they'll act like it's the, the end of the world. I'll be like, so do I, man. And it's the worst. Yeah. And, I'll, and they'll be like, what? I go, yeah, but, but it's also what makes us creative. And it's also what's going to uh-huh. make you do good stuff. And then they're like, oh, okay. Like, I'll be like, most of the time I can match them on the stuff. They're <laughs> like, well, I have this. Oh, I do too. But, you yeah, know, let's yeah. work on it. This is how I do. And, and then trying to tell them to get them to change how they look at, you know, especially when it comes to art. But I'll say, like, this will work in life in general, that you're not in competition with anybody else. You're only in competition mm-hmm. with the last thing you've done, like when your last mm-hmm. thing you've worked on. You know, you, you can't really be in competition with anybody else. And then, and then to take a thing, I'll say, like, you know, when someone tells you you've done great and you're the best, you say thank you. And when someone tells you you're the worst, I hate you and I hate your art, you say thank you. Because basically mm-hmm. everything's subjective. A person's opinion, you know, all you can do is work on stuff that makes you happy and do the. You're working against the last thing you did, trying to make mm-hmm. yourself, you know, enjoy it. But you can't, and I'll use an example of them where I'll be like, how many of you have gone to see a movie? but you had three or four friends tell you it was the best movie ever. And so you came out of it. I hate that movie, you know, but then you go and you see a movie where you had zero expectations and you loved it. And then everybody else is like, that's the worst movie. You know, it's because it depends on what you're going in. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going in that day, they come to see your art and their dog got run over. Then they come and look at your art. They're going to go, this is awful. You need to be off the internet. And you're going to be like, dang it. (laughs) I'm awful, yeah. you know, but it, you know, it's, I don't know. And it's, art makes it way worse too. Cause everyone has an opinion on it. It's not like someone's going to go to a programmer and go, let me see your code. Oh, that's <laughs> ugly. That's what did a child do this? You know, yeah. it's not the same. Everybody has an opinion on art or they're like, you know, well, I just don't like that. Or it's like, mm-hmm. you know, that's good, but I don't like blue. Can you change it? Like I've had stuff like that so many times that if they're paying for it, you have to be like, all right. (laughs) That reminds me of the time you were drawing in Chipotle and some random dude wanted to look through your sketchbook. I was like, that's good. That's good. That's not so good. Yeah. 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 I'll get random stuff like that. And it's like, I didn't realize it was a critique. He was like, can I look through your stuff? I'm like, yeah, why not? And it was like, this one's good. That one's not that good. This one's good. Ah, uh, this one needs. Some. I was like, "Oh my god!" I did not. I was. I did not know I was getting a Chipotle uh, portfolio review. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too funny, okay. Man. This brings us to the bad dad. Uh, this week, oh. this guy's in Kentucky. Father and son charged with plotting to beat up judge in son's child porn case. So this guy, he's in jail for child pornography. 
and he's in jail. So he's still waiting to go to his actual trial and he's about to get bailed out, but he gets another inmate and he promises to bail him out as well if he agrees to join him. And the dad is paying for all this to beat the judge and the lawyer with a baseball bat. And because they're very smart, they plotted all this with the dad on the phones that are recorded on a constant level. <laughs> yeah. So this guy. That's got to be the times where it's kind of fun to be the ones that are listening to it. It's like, like oh, is this guy for real? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got to hear this. This one's a good one. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, he's, wow. He was on there for 45 counts of possessing or viewing matter, portraying a sexual performance by a minor. Yeah. The other guy. And then it's like the whole, so, you know, he asks him, you know, are we going to kill him? He's like, well, that could happen with a baseball bat. So right there, it just kind of opens wow. up. So yeah, they're both That's now awful. no longer eligible for bail. And now the dad's going in. Nice. So he was facing 20 years for porn and now 20 more years for conspiracy. Wow. Let's see what the. That's got to be a screwed up family history there that I know. Well, I mean, oh my God, it's one of those things where, you know, what won't you do for your kid? (laughs) I guess. Yeah, I know. At that point you are kind of like where it's like, yeah, well, you had child porn, man. I'll see you in 20 years. (laughs) Because I've told my kids, I've told my kids ever again, you know, ever since they like were teenagers and old enough to start doing stuff to get trouble. Like if you, Put, if you get yourself in jail, guess what? You're you're staying there. I'm not bailing you out. So <laughs> yeah. that's a good one. You're staying. <laughs> you got yourself in there. You can figure out how to get yourself out. <laughs> like, like, Enjoy yourself. <laughs> that's so awesome. I, I don't know that. Oh God, that's just awful. Mike and I always do like the bad dads just because it makes us feel better for being shitty dads <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> But he'd had to take it down a notch because I had said after a while, it was always be like, we were like, ha ah, ha 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 ha. And then he'd have one that was so bad that it was just like getting kicked in the balls. It would like end everything. You'd be like, oh, like yeah. it would always be some like, yeah. Rape or murder. or Yeah. yeah. I'm like, these are too oh. bad. Like uh. we can't have this bad. Like this one's bad where you can still be like. I'm glad these they guys were are stupid. all in jail. Yeah. They're very stupid. Uh, yeah, and for serious. They're all bad. But yeah. yeah. See, I had to bring it down. Let's cheer it up. Yeah, I was like, uh, thanks a lot, Robert. <laughs> Didn't I just say? <laughs> ah, God damn it. This is what I always do. Um, like someone... That's like a, a friendship thing that parallels parenting. It's like, didn't I just say not to do that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, on gag on this, a couple of weeks ago, we were recording it and someone brought up Goodwill Hunting and our guest said she wanted Robin Williams to be her therapist. And then, of course, I go, what, you want the guy that hung himself to be your therapist? And then her was oh. like, oh. I was like, well, that ruins oh. that. Now we don't, now we all want to go home and cry. Oh. So if you think I'm an awful person, email us <laughs> at thestanduppdads at gmail.com. <laughs> Tell me, it's like, Rob, stop, knock, you know, or maybe Uh this appeals to you. I know we may have some goth (laughs) followers, some emo. (laughs) Alicia, where can we find you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Give them your address. No, (laughs) I meant if you would like some of her good advice. Where can we find you? (laughs) Of the three of us, she's the only one that seems to have her head on straight. So (laughs) you want to get some advice from someone that knows what they're talking about. (laughs) <laughs> what website could they find your uh, info? <laughs> so my website is aliciabates.com. So that's spelled A-L-I-C-I-A Bates, B-A-T-E-S.com. It's under construction. There is some stuff on there right now, but I'm completely revamping things. You can also find me on Facebook. My business page is at Alicia M for Maria Bates. Um, so Alicia at Alicia M Bates um, on Facebook. Not for master. And I'm not on any of the other social. I mean, I have the other social media, but oh my God, I don't know how people stay on top of all that stuff. Yeah. I can barely stay on top of Facebook. So <laughs> uh, did you want to talk about the, the fund me thing or? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, April 23rd in Citrus Heights, California, my nephew and his daughter were in a very serious car accident. The people who caused the accident died on scene. So it was a fatal accident. Thankfully, my my nephew and my great niece survived. 
but with great, great difficulty. There, um, <clears throat> my niece was actually in the hospital for, my great niece was in the hospital for um, about seven weeks. She is home, um, but my nephew had, he had to get his jaw wired shut. It was broken in four places and his chin was broken and his heel was completely shattered, a shattered mm. heel. <laughs> And his ankle was broken. Um, and my niece is um, in a back brace and she's uh, paralyzed. Uh, uh, her lower legs and, and feet are paralyzed. So she's in a wheelchair. So they're in pretty, they're both in uh, really bad shape, but slowly improving. So um, my nephew did a couple of weeks ago, was able to get his jaw, the, the wires cut. So he's, you know, now has use of his jaw yeah. and um but he still has healing that he has to do there and uh he's still in a cast for his leg um but ollie was um you know she was released and she's in a wheelchair so she has to wheel herself around so they they did there is a gofundme account um which i well i'll i'll say this i'll say more about this in a minute but i'm so grateful to the community um because so far what they've been able to do with that is get a ramp for the front of the house um it's yeah. a really long ramp because ollie is only six years old and so she's she has to be able to because you know the way my family is we're all like hey you need to be independent you need to figure out how to do this on your own so she has to wheel herself up so they had to make it really long so that way it wasn't too much of a um, incline for her to try to wheel herself up um, well, they need to do it in the backyard there. There's cement that has to be laid down. They have to widen doors inside the house and they have to also, uh, uh, remodel the bathroom so that it's, everything is wheelchair accessible. So there's a lot that has to be done. And then they also need to get another vehicle. We strongly believe that the fact that my nephew and my great niece were in a truck, a big truck is what saved their lives because the other vehicle was an SUV and it actually, when they hit the other, so this, they were going southbound on Auburn Boulevard and um, coming up to Greenback Lane. Mm -hmm. So that's a 40 mile an hour zone. They were going 80. Oh, wow. Coming and very close to Greenback Lane. Mm -hmm. And they knocked my nephew back. Um, I think it was something like 17 feet. And he mm -hmm. was in a big truck. They were in an SUV. The SUV, and there's, uh, there's actually uh, news footage on it. Mm -hmm. SUV was flipped over on top of the truck. So again, they died on scene. There was two people in that other vehicle. My nephew, of course, because, you know, how paranoid is any parent going to be now to be in a vehicle at all, let alone a small vehicle after something like that. So, of course, he, you know, he's, he's going to get another truck. So they have to do that. Now, here's the hard part. <laughs> Those other people were not licensed, oh, man. nor did they have any insurance. So, you know, our insurance took care, or my nephew's insurance is taking mm -hmm. care of paying off the vehicle, but it doesn't pay for a new vehicle because mm -hmm. he had only had it for a few months at the time. So uh, now they have to go and get a new vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, they've got to pay for all of the stuff, you know, on their own. There, there's, there's no one to go. There's no insurance company who's going to be like, okay, we, all of this happened because of our drivers. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not, it's none of it's covered. So that's all stuff that they have to do. Um, so it's been... It's been a struggle, but I'm praising God all the time that they're alive because they could have, mm -hmm. they could have died in this. And it was a fatal accident. It was a bad, bad accident, but um, it's been crazy. This has been crazy. So I'll get a <laughs> link from you for the GoFundMe and I'll put that in the show notes. So, and I know now's a yeah. rough time, but whatever you can do, anything helps. Yeah. And then I will also, um, I'm about to do an update uh, today and the GoFundMe update will also post it to my Facebook account. So um, if you find me at uh, my personal profile is, I think I'm, I honestly don't know how I'm listed as my personal profile, but Alicia Bates, <laughs> I'm sure you find me. Um, and um, it'll be, it'll be linked up there too on the top. So yeah, seriously, let's help that out. And if you want to get a picture yes. of Ron, of Mike's Afro, a self-portrait. <laughs> <laughs> Who would they write to? Uh, pencil for Hire. That's pencil, F-O-R, hire.com or Pencil for Hire on Instagram. It feels like a, yeah, like just not even worth mentioning after that GoFundMe. Like that needs to be taken care of. That's so awful. And having, and how old was she? She's six. 
Uh, and it happened it happened the uh, day before my nephew's um 32nd birthday uh, <laughs> so he spent his birthday getting his jaw wired shut uh, yeah it's pretty yeah. bad but at least being alive yeah as as bad as all of that is life moves forward mm -hmm. and um it's you know just I, you know, you got to keep working. You got, you got to keep looking forward. You got to keep looking for the good in life because there's a lot of bad and you can let that, you can let that hold you down. You can let that hold you back, but you have to make a choice one day if you're going to let that keep happening. You know, again, you can either half-ass your life and wait for stuff to happen to you, or you can full-ass it and make your life happen the way you want. And there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be hard times. There's going to be negativity. There's going to be difficulties, extreme difficulties. But all of that helps to build character. It helps to give you the tools. It helps you to build and learn how to use tools to move forward in life and to make your life what you want it to be. That I'm just a big believer in that. <laughs> so normally at this time, I'd be telling you to throw some money at I Have Mongombo, the graphic novel by Doug Gray. But this week, yeah, if yeah. you were going to get that, send that over to that GoFundMe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or Doug instead. too. Do both. Or do both. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and while you're doing that in the background, play the gag on this podcast. That's my side project that's run by Big Nick. We record every week. We record local comics and have a great time doing it. We record, we interview local comics and have a great time doing it. We just did Luke Soin. Uh, I think we're going to have Joey C on this week. And uh, give it a listen. Comes out every Monday. Alicia, I want to have you back so we could talk about the financial part of your side gig or your small Absolutely. business. Yeah, I think side gig doesn't give it enough. No, the I have a side gig. <laughs> okay, I have a side gig, but this is this is a business I want yeah. to build, a coaching business I want to build. So this and, is different. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've written a book, which I read, and <laughs> it. You know, I think we could all benefit because we talked about it once. I think it was like episode forty-eight or forty-six. We talked about allowance, and we kind of talked mm -hmm. about teaching our kids about money, but we never went into it. Because I really think we have let our kids down in the schools when it comes to dealing with mm -hmm. personal finance because oh, we I agree. only learn on the fly. And that's the worst thing to learn. You know, there's a lot of things you can learn on the fly. That and using condoms is not one of them. <laughs> but, so, yeah, we'll plan a date. We'll get you back <laughs> on here. And Alicia, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. It was so fun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we will talk to you guys. Thank you for being on. See you next, next week. Next week. The thing I want to say is thank you all for coming. Bye bye.